guys, it's Janixa and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do another year in review and this time we're going to be talking about Essie. So whew, as you guys know, Essie releases a lot of collections. We already looked at OPI's year in review and they only released four collections. So that was a pretty quick video. This Essie one is going to be a little bit longer. So let's just jump right into Essie's year of releases for 2022. All right, so the very first collection we got from Essie in 2022 was the Swoon in the Lagoon collection. And some of you are probably thinking, wait a minute, Jenny, Xa, you reviewed this collection in like December 2021. Yes, I did. But, <laughs> but Essie officially released the collection in 2022. Sometimes polishes are made available to purchase a little bit earlier, but the official release dates don't come till later on. So Swoon in the Lagoon is one of those collections that was available for purchase early, but didn't release until technically January 2022. I loved this collection. It reminded me of The Notebook. I said this in my review of this collection. I just got The Notebook vibes. That scene in The Notebook where they're in the canoe and you know, it, it, oh, I love that movie. And yeah, this collection, that's what it reminded me of. This was a nine piece collection and they were all creams. I was fine with that. I didn't mind the fact that they were all creams just because I really loved the color story and the Essie creams were absolutely gorgeous, almost one coaters. They did so many beautiful colors for this collection. Again, I have my iPad here to look at the swatches. They did the yellow, they did like a pinky peach, they did a nice darkish brown, a blue, an orange, two greens, a white, off-white-ish, and a like magenta color. This was a beautiful collection. This is the type of collection that I like to see from Essie if they're going to do all cream collections. I like to see variety. As we'll see later on in the video, there hasn't been a lot of variety for other collections. So this Swoon in the Lagoon collection to me was an excellent start to the year. Next up, we had a six piece collection and this was the Valentine's Day collection for 2022. Now, when it comes to Valentine's Day collections, Essie is usually one of the only mainstream brands to do something there. I mean, maybe Sally Hansen will do something and this year Orly also did something, but I think that the more consistent every year releasing a Valentine's Day collection brand is Essie. I try not to be too hard on these collections because they're so typical Valentine's Day, you know, red and pink and then a metallic. And that's exactly what they did. We have a red, you know, like two pinks, a metallic, we have like a pearl uh, finish, and then we have a neutral color. Um, this is the start of the year of Essie Neutrals because oh my goodness is there so many of them. Um, but overall I try not to be too hard on Essie for Valentine's Day collections because I mean I know what else are they gonna do. Personally I would love to see an anti-Valentine's Day collection. For example I want to see a black polish with red glitter or something like that. Um, you know, just maybe something a little bit opposite of the typical romantic colors. Let's do something about, I don't know, forget relationships and single for life kind of <laughs> collection. Something different like that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Do I see Essie ever doing something like that? Probably not, but uh, overall, this year's Valentine's Day collection was a pretty one. Oh, I also do like that for the Valentine's Day collections, they do a um, little decoration on the cap. I love that. I kind of wish they would do that for every collection, but it seems to be mainly just the Target exclusives and the Valentine's Day collection. So I'm okay with that. It's gorgeous. I love the designs. <laughs> 
Next up, we had the Flight of Fantasy Spring 2022 collection. This collection was kind of meh to me. Um, there was a couple colors that I loved, very pretty, but as he heavily started to introduce neutrals and they're just not always all that flattering and they kind of overdid the neutrals this year quite a bit. So we have the blue in this collection and the purple and then there is a like greenish yellowy color those were the three standouts to me but then we have three other uh neutral colors and those were just not very cute in my opinion i i don't like them i i, I, I don't know what else to say about them i don't like them i will say though that every single polish in this collection had a great formula spoiler alert every single Essie collection has had a really good formula so you know kudos to Essie for that um but yeah this spring collection was definitely not one of my favorite Essie spring collections like I said I liked half of it and then the other half I could have done without then we got one of two Target exclusive collections for the year. They usually always do a Target exclusive at the beginning of the year, towards the beginning of the year, kind of in the springtime, and then towards the end of the year, towards the fall. This one was the Movin' and Groovin' collection, and I loved everything about this collection. All the colors were so gorgeous. They went so well together. Again, formulas were amazing. The caps had cute designs. There was nothing I didn't like about this collection. This was an A plus in my book. It really seems like when it comes to Target exclusives, Essie works a little bit harder and they, you know, kind of step up their game with their color stories and um, even uh, themes of collections because this one is... I don't know, is it 60s or 70s theme? I don't know. But the theme is really cute and the theme of the one that we're gonna see later on was adorable also. I have really come to love the Target exclusives and yeah, anytime it gets close to a new Target exclusive collection coming out, I get excited because they've been really good since roughly, um, mm, Halloween 2020 because that was a Target exclusive collection and that was a good one and the first time that Essie did a Halloween collection. So yeah, this Movin' and Groovin' collection is perfect in my book and even though it's probably similar to other Essie polishes you have in your collection because again, these are all just creams, I don't care, I say you still need it because it is just so cute with those designs on the caps and I, I don't care, you need it. <laughs> then after that beautiful Movin' and Groovin' collection, they gave us a dud. <laughs> they gave us the CVS exclusive Hostess with the Mostest collection. Usually they do a CVS exclusive about once a year and it's usually around spring and summer. Now, this collection was reminiscent of the spring collection. They're not identical, but some of the colors are really, really close for them to have released the collections in, you know, just a, such a short amount of time. Um, I think the standout in this collection was Blooming Friendships, the blue one. Uh, the red one was nice, and then the uh, kind of orangey one was nice but then there was three again neutrals that were just not all that cute i feel like if you're going to release a bunch of neutrals slash nudes they need to be something nice that's going to um you know match people's skin tones and and you know just make neutral lovers want to wear them and I feel like most of these didn't hit that mark. Yeah, this Hostess with the Mostest collection just didn't do it for me. Like I said, the blue one was probably the best out of this collection. It's a bummer because the previous CVS exclusives had been really nice. Like we got uh, the Roll With It collection which had hollow in it and um, I can't think off the top of my head of the other ones, but 
normally we get some nice collections and for this year it just wasn't a good one i'm hoping that for 2023 we see something a lot more exciting next up we got the summer collection this one is called i'll see you later this one is a six piece collection five of them are creams and one is like a metallic -y color i loved this collection too i enjoyed it very very much the color story was really really pretty that metallic green was absolutely gorgeous i loved it i know it wasn't a lot of people's favorites but i enjoy metallics a lot and i love the way that essie does them so that one was a fun one for me i also really enjoyed the orange polish in this collection i'm sorry guys i don't remember the names of absolutely everything i try to remember you know every polish name and sometimes i get them but so you know i, I just i can't remember everything but i will have you know pictures on the screen and you guys will know what i'm talking about but yeah this collection was a really pretty one again a lot of creams this is gonna be a huge trend here in this video most of the polishes that essie released this year are creams i will try to you know tally it up at the end and see how many creams we got from them this year um but yeah it's a lot so that's why i was happy to see this green metallic in this collection i don't know it was a fun collection i think it fit their theme well like a tiki bar kind of theme so yeah i enjoyed their summer collection Next up, we got the Handmade with Love collection, which was a nine piece collection in the US. I know that some countries only got six pieces. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I don't know why IC does that. <laughs> but this was a beautiful collection, all creams again. Um, I would say probably one of the more boring collections so far, um, but there was some good standouts. For example, the green um, and the gray, and I think the brownish, um, oh gosh, which, I know the name of that one. Was it Crochet Away? I can't think of it, I'm sorry. But they did have some beautiful colors in here, but then there was some that were kind of repetitive that you know weren't all that exciting. But overall, I really enjoyed the theme of the collection and the names were the names were a lot of fun. So I really love that Essie seems to be having more fun with the themes and names of their polishes. And so far, they have been fun. It makes me look forward to see what they have, you know, for 2023. I'm hoping that we get some good collections with some fun names, some fun themes, because yeah, I think that's just part of the fun of collecting polishes. Next up, we got the Crystal Clear Intentions Trio, which was an Ulta exclusive. Again, they usually do an exclusive trio with Ulta every year, usually around the summertime. I really enjoyed this trio. It consisted of two creams and a beautiful topper. I love the purple and the greenish color that they chose for this trio. This was a very nice trio. I enjoyed it. Usually the Ulta trios are pretty fun. I remember the 2020 trio, which was themed after the Olympics, and it was a red, blue, and like goldish metallic and the, that was a lot of fun that was a fun theme i i've enjoyed their ultra trios lately oh and then last year they did that um like tie-dye inspired trio that was a lot of fun too so i always keep my eye out for ultra trios because they're usually a lot of fun <laughs> Next, we got the Off the Grid collection, which was their fall 2022 collection. This was a six piece collection of, you guessed it, creams. <laughs> this was a nice collection, but I feel like other mainstream brands released better collections. So the SE Fall collection kind of, you know, went under the radar. It wasn't one of their best. Uh, you guys have heard me say this before, but I think one of their best was the 2019 fall collection. I, I don't know. I might be biased because that was the collection that got me into polish. But um, yeah, this one, the green is gorgeous. The blue is gorgeous and the orange is gorgeous. And I know that everybody really liked Bold and Boulder, which is like the wine burgundy color. But once again, we've got two neutrally type colors there that people were kind of wondering why 
you released neutral colors for, um, I don't know, let's see how many collections. For one, two, three, four, and for about the last, for about five previous collections already for the year, do we really need any more neutrals? I, I don't think we do. And for some reason, Essie was on a neutral kick this year. I'm really hoping that this trend changes for 2023 because I don't want to see any more neutrals from Essie. We've gotten enough. Hopefully they shift their focus to another color or just, you know, give us a couple of different colors instead of two neutrals, you know, that would be really nice to see. I think for their fall collection, they really would have benefited from a mustard yellow. We don't have that here. And I think we could have uh, gotten rid of one of those neutral colors and put that yellow in there and it would have made the collection a lot more attractive. Next up, we got another Target exclusive collection. This is the one, like I said earlier, that usually comes out in the fall time. This one is called the Study Tips Collection. I loved this collection too. I loved the theme. It was like a back to school theme. I loved the colors. I loved everything about this collection. Once again, the little designs on the caps, the formulas were absolutely amazing. Yes, they were all creams, but if you're going to release all creams constantly, then you've got to give us a good theme, you've got to give us a good color story, and you've got to give us some cute names for the nail polish, and of course, good formulas, and I think Essie did all of that with these polishes. This collection, ugh, it really was one of my favorites. Both Essie and Target exclusive collections were just a plus collections in my opinion and lastly for the regular essie <laughs> line because there is more for gel couture and expressi but these are just the regular essie line we have the winter 2022 collection this makes the 11th collection of the year for essie so that's a lot, that's a lot. OPI only did four, Orly usually does four, and maybe a few sprinkled here or there. But yeah, Essie did 11 collections in their regular line this year. Um, and this winter collection, a lot of people didn't like it because they felt like it was more of a fall collection. And I can definitely see that and maybe that's why I enjoyed it a lot. I really liked the green, I liked the gold metallic, I really liked the blue. I enjoyed this collection. I thought the formulas were excellent, excellent formulas. I don't know, I don't usually, okay, usually, this collection would have been one that I was like, ugh, really, Essie? Why? But for some reason, no. It just really caught my attention. And again, I'm assuming maybe it is because it looks like a fall collection. And usually fall collections for me are my absolute favorite. So yeah, I'm going to go with that answer. <laughs> but yeah, I enjoyed this collection. And Yep, we got four additional creams, but uh, yeah, I was just really happy with the green and the um, gold metallics here. All right, guys, that's it, <laughs> finally. <laughs> so let's get the final numbers here. So for the regular Essie line, they released 11 collections, totaling 69 polishes. Out of those 69 polishes, 62 were creams. Do you guys see what I mean about way too many creams? <laughs> Out of 69, 62 were creams. Ugh. So 69 polishes for just the regular Essie line, but then when we add in the Expressies and the Gel Coutures, we have a total of 101 polishes released by Essie as a whole in the year 2022. That's a lot, you guys. That is a lot of polishes. I think Essie is probably going to win for the most amount of polishes released in a year. That's it, that's crazy. 101 polishes and I bought them all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right, guys, that is it for this video. Let's discuss this in the comments down below. I bet you guys are going to have a ton to say about these final numbers so please leave your comments in the 
comment box down below. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!